Welcome back to our series Exploring Christmas. So it's uh, the tenth day today. We'll have a look in our advent calendar and see what's on our scroll for the tenth. Right, the prophets of, of Isaiah again. This time towards the end, Isaiah 59, partway through verse 15 through to verse 20. Now, in this vision that uh, Isaiah is sharing with us in this passage, uh, Isaiah sees God himself looking at the situation on earth and especially the plight of those who were called to be his people. And he sees what a terrible mess they're in and uh, that they aren't able to save themselves. They have uh, just seem to have, be so full of evidence of, of sin and disobedience and wickedness. And uh, what we have in this passage is uh, God's plan for how he is going to address this terrible, what looks like a desperate situation. So let me read those verses from Isaiah 59, 15 onwards. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, men will fear the name of the Lord and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. So when God looks and sees things are in such a terrible state, what is God's answer? Well, God himself will come to save his people. And we see again in this prophecy how it ties in with everything else that we've already seen, all the other promises that we've noted, that God himself is going to come and intervene and save his people. And he will come in righteousness. Again, that's a theme we've seen before, isn't it? He will come both to save, but also, again, to pronounce judgment. We read there of one who is a redeemer. The redeemer will come to Zion. Zion is just another name for Jerusalem. It again, represents coming to those who are the people of God. Uh, so yes, he's a redeemer. And a redeemer is someone who uh, pays a price to rescue people. So for example, to rescue someone from slavery, paying a price to set them free. And that is what God himself is going to do. But also it says that he will come to those in Jacob who repent of their sins. You know, we've been reading these wonderful promises of a deliverer, a rescuer, the Satan crusher. But it's becoming evident, isn't it, that while it is wonderful news that a rescuer, a deliverer is on his way, he is not going to be saving everyone. And here something is mentioned that is necessary. There needs to be repentance. There will be a time when people need to acknowledge that they need to be rescued. They will need to acknowledge that they have done wrong and deserve God's judgment, but need to ask for his forgiveness. So we're learning a bit more, aren't we, each time about this promised deliverer. So I hope you can join us again tomorrow when we continue to learn as we explore Christmas. Thank you for joining us today.